Hello and welcome. Back in November of 2019, I made an impulse purchase and bought my specialized Rockhopper hardtail. This was the first new mountain bike I had purchased since I bought my LL Bean Approach back in 1994. So here's what happened. I was at my local bike shop to order a new wheel for one of my road bikes when this kiwi acid green bike over in the back corner caught my eye. Long story short, I got a mile down the road, turned around at the hardware store, went back to the bike shop and bought the bike. And as I recall, I paid around $560 for it. Over the years, this has always been my favorite mountain bike in my stable. But it has its flaws too. So, here are three things I love about this bike, and two things I don't. I absolutely love the way this bike looks. As I said, the color first caught my eye. And I still really like how this bright green paint with black accents stands out. There is absolutely no way this bike could ever be lost in a crowd. <laughs> uh, in recent years, there has been a trend towards matte black frames. And if somebody likes that, hey, you know, more power to them. But to me, that always looks like the builder got as far as the primer stage and stopped painting. On the other hand, my bike's glossy, super bright green is on the opposite end of that spectrum, which I truly enjoy. Another aspect of the bike's appearance I love is its shape. The frame's length, proportions, and head tube angle all look a little bit swoopy to me. And the 29 inch wheels and tires give it a bit of an aggressive appearance. It's a combined look that comes together quite well in my opinion. I love how easy it is to upgrade this bike. When I bought it, it was a 3x8 with Shimano rapid fire combo shifters, a rigid seat post, cable operated disc brakes, a sealed square taper bottom bracket, and an SR Suntour XCT spring fork. To be clear, this was fairly typical for entry level hardtails at the time, and in many cases still is. Further, there was nothing wrong with that setup, and I ran it that way for a full season, loving every moment on the trails. The thing is, this bike is a great upgrade platform especially since nothing on it is of a proprietary design. For example, the bottom bracket is English threaded, which allowed me to easily go one by with external bearings. The Shimano Hyperglide hub on the stock wheel accommodates up to 11 speed cassettes. And I'm presently running an 11 speed L2 setup, which replaced a nine speed setup. I've swapped in a couple different wider handlebars, a shorter stem, a couple of different dropper posts, Tektro hydraulic brakes, and a RockShox Judy Silva TK air fork. These were all possible because the Rock Upper uses standard sizing for its components. I didn't have to go out of my way to find things that fit. I love how this bike handles on trails. Seriously, this bike is a total joy to ride. The wheelbase is not so long that it makes turns like a school bus, while at the same time it's not so short that the handling is twitchy. It's kind of hit that Goldilocks zone. The 29 inch wheels and tires live up to the reputation of this size being able to roll over just about any obstacle I'm likely to encounter. And with the fork locked, the bike climbs like a monster. After all, I did name it Gojira for more than its color. With the fork open, roots, rocks, and bumps present no challenge, with the caveat that I am not into jumps and drops. While I also enjoy my Polygon Siskiyou Full Sus, I really like the way this hardtail handles 
twists and turns. I always know where the rear wheel is and what's going on back there. Perhaps I'm a bit of a Luddite, but I genuinely prefer the feel and handling of a hardtail over a full sus. <laughs> to, to the extent that I often leave the rear shock locked out on my polygon. And I really like this particular hardtail best in my stable for its handling characteristics. So, there are three things I love about my rock hopper. As for two things I don't love about it, honestly, I genuinely had to struggle to come up with a couple of negatives. So, I don't love how much this bike weighs. As built now, the bike weighs 30.2 pounds. And that's after the various upgrades, which reduced the weight from, as I recall, about 32 and a half pounds stock. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that 30.2 pounds is horrible or anything like that. It's not. It's just that if I could find a way to get it down, oh, another couple of pounds, hey, that would be great. But given that the 29-inch tires and wheels, the hydraulic brakes, and the dropper posts are inherently weighty compared to the stock stuff, there aren't many options. I could go tubeless, but that is not anywhere close to two pounds. I could hunt around for carbon fiber parts, but that could get pretty pricey pretty quickly. Sadly, there may only be one viable option. I need to reduce my weight, not the bikes. But that is an entirely different discussion, trust me. I don't love that I cannot buy factory touch-up paint. Okay, that's not about the bike per se, but as I said, I had trouble coming up with negatives for the rock opera. It's that good. It is a little annoying that I can't go to the specialized website and buy touch-up paint for the bike like I can for my Trek Domane. The rock hopper has accrued a few chips and scratches and has some significant chainstay paint damage from the original 3x crank set. I've searched all the local automotive shops for touch-up paint, but nothing comes close. There are other brands available online, like Yeti, as well as mix-it-yourself kits. None of them really looked right or feasible to me, and I think that a mismatched touch-up would look far worse than a scratch. And to be clear, I'm not too wound up about paint imperfections. I mean, I have a pair of vintage Richard Mountain bikes, both of which got clear-coated, warts and all. The Rock Hopper really is my favorite mountain bike in my stable, as I said. Considering that I still have my 1994 approach, I'm pretty confident that in the absence of catastrophic damage, I'll be riding this bike for a long, long time to come. In fact, the only improvement I can think of now would be if it were bright red. If you want to learn more about the Rock Hopper, there's a link to a video lower left where I went over most of the upgrades which I've mentioned here prior to the L2 group set. There is also a link to a video lower right concerning the installation of the L2 group set. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate that. Goodbye and have a wonderful day.